There we go. There we go. All right, welcome to It's Casual and Jonathan, bring us in with some music. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, We were supposed to have Jay Thompson on the show tonight. And you know how he likes to go out and, you know, like play guitar in front of waterfalls and bridges and beaches and stuff. Um, He was carried away by seagulls. No. Uh, He, he, uh, so that would be cool, and issues. I wish we could televise that. That would be awesome. But no, we had, we had some sound issues. Abduction by a seagull. No. So I just saw a message as Jonathan was playing guitar. Jay saying, hey, I couldn't connect for It's Casual in my interview, so I'm going on right now for a live show. He is competing with us now. I... Darn it. <laughs> oh, boy. Foiled again by Jay Thompson and his wonderful, <laughs> wonderfulness. We love him. Yes. He's so great. <laughs> We well, love Jimmy Thompson. We will, and he's we will try to reschedule him, and hopefully he'll yeah. be uh, somewhere outside where a, ri- a Wi-Fi router is close by. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we can have him on again. But we do have tonight uh, Dennis Piper, comedian, and we also have CJ. Hey, what yeah. am I doing here? CJ's back. CJ's back. So How's everybody doing, man? Peace out. It's going to be man. psychedelic. <laughs> I got my cat with me. See. Oh, we got a cat cameo. Yeah. I'll cat be cameo. Da- What's his or her name? Um, well, uh, his name is Daddy's Girl. Aha! <laughs> yeah. Daddy's Girl. Yes, sir. His name is Daddy's yeah, Girl. His name is Daddy's <laughs> Girl. Yeah, watch this shit. You want to see something crazy? Watch. Go for oh it. Oh my God! Look, see what I'm saying? Wow. Oh, see, he's got a little tongue out. Oh, yep. he's just a good boy. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. He'll, he'll do this while I play guitar. Girl. Wow. I love that. We love the cat cameo. Top that, Lars Nagel. This is my uh, six-foot um, beanbag chair. It rolls around. <laughs> okay. I want to know where you get a six-foot beanbag chair. <laughs> well, I made it. <laughs> kind of had to make oh, that. okay. Oh, you made yes. it. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. that's I know. I looked it up. I'm like, beanbag chair that rolls. And they're like, no. So I took three office chairs and I took the feet off them. I stuck them down like this and built a frame, see? And then I put the feet back on top of that, see? It looks like one of the alien monsters from Voyage. Do you guys remember Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea back in the 60s? No. DJ remembers. Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. They used to strap on guns just to go to the latrine, damn it. They were tough guys. (laughs) Admiral Nelson in the Sea View. Yeah. Mm. Which and the, the same guy that did that in Austin's face, Irwin Allen, Irwin Allen Productions. Hey, what am I doing here anyway? Is there like something I'm supposed to do? Is there like a thing? I'm... Well, you're a playboy. Yeah, you're, you're supposed, supposed, to supposed to be one of the music guests, guests for tonight after oh, Jay yeah. Thompson's got... internet went kaput. So we're winging it. Oh. <laughs> yes. Sorry, That's bro. Our, I just got motto. off of work like minutes ago, had to walk <laughs> down dinner. So we're winging it. I got no notes in front of me. Awesome. Well, man. I did want to say 
<laughs> that we also have in the green room, Joanna. She she clicked on Joanna. the link. And Joanna's yeah, here too, so I don't know if you, fan. Yeah, I don't know if you want me yes. to bring her up or yeah, bring her you, up. All right, here you hey, go. Go the party. Oh have five oh people. Oh, 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 how are you, Joanna? <gasps> Joanna oh. is here. For this, I've been marathon sleeping for the past couple of days. Nice. So, um, if you can ah. forgive me, uh, I'm not exactly dressed for this. <laughs> My hair is a mess, and I'm just like, oh. That's all good. Marathon it's sleeping. All good. Yeah, like I slept. Uh, Sunday, between Sunday and Monday, I slept 18 hours. And between last night and oh, today, I slept 15 hours. Did so, you get bitten by a TT fly or something? I think no, you missed the call. <laughs> no, this, this just occasionally happens to me. My body just crashes. So it's, oh, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's also going to be in preparation for the next few weeks with going up to Bob's and hopefully seeing Kim at the Earl. So nice. with all the running I'm going to have in the next few weeks, it, it's it's good for me to get prepared. But Jonathan, I saw the end of your uh, set. Excellent. Thank I really you. enjoyed that. Uh, if I do step off for a few minutes, it's because my phone is going dead. So I'll have to transfer to all the right. computer. You fell asleep. Okay, carry on, carry on. All right. You're narcoleptic on us. Thank you for being here. And thanks for being awake. Good. Very good out. to see you. <laughs> it's good to see y'all too. I know that I don't always make it. I just, uh, I'm one of these people that, um, you know, sometimes I'm around and sometimes I'm not. I'm not. So I appreciate y'all's uh, understanding. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, we I share, had a rough we period. We love and uh, cherish you, Joanna. Thank you. I cherish you guys too, even though I'm not as involved as most of y'all are. Uh, I cherish y'all too. Just, I've been telling people about kimono. I told a uh, colleague about it at work and he might be trying to uh i told him to reach out um you know maybe he'll do a poetry reading or something but anyway i i gave him the info so we'll see so i've been All right. telling a lot of people about kimono and and uh you know the retreat which is now not so much a retreat but still it's this freaking covid thing is just yeah but i'm vaccinated yeah, baby. Very good. Um, yeah, I'm, I went back to work again today uh, selling shoes at Dillard's. All right. So, ah. Yeah, I was masked up all day, which I didn't like. Uh, <laughs> and I started to remember why why it was that I, I was so happy when I left the last place. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man, my feet. My feet are killing me. Go the only thing there. I want to know, Rory, Rory, the only thing I want to know is why is it when I go in there, I ain't got no 14s to choose from, man. Okay. <laughs> I know I know what you're talking about, brother. I wear 13, so. It's rough. Yeah. It's rough. Yeah, and, and imagine trying to get size 13 in China when I was living in China. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Like when they're made, you can't get them. I would, have to, I would have to buy shoes when I would make trips to America to see my family and take them back to, take them back to China with me. Oh, boy. So, yeah, gunboats, gunboats. <laughs> well, again, you take care, okay, Joanna? I'm going to get CJ to play us some music. I want some music yeah, now. Yeah, go, go right, right. In. I'm All right here. Right. And start his psychedelic show for us. <laughs> Woohoo! I don't have the psychedelic cameras on tonight, but I'll tell you what I've oh. been practicing. I don't. It's, oh. it's, it's all packed up for tomorrow night. But I've been practicing oh, this for my gig tomorrow night. All right, watch out. All right. All right. It starts out real mellow, you ready? Go for it, man. Sit on your hands. If that's what it takes not to touch me Cover my lips That's the way it makes it Dress your mouth Take out my brain Maybe that way I'll stop thinking Things that I'm thinking about And put on your coat Cause I think it's gonna get cold, dear I won't get too close I don't wanna pretend I can keep you warm Take out my heart These feelings, they just don't belong here They'll only stir up a storm And I know this 
is wrong, dear, but it's so hard to be strong, dear. And I wrote this song cause I can't say it's not going away. Don't think you want to hear what I'm saying And I'll close my eyes Don't want to see how you look at me If I don't go to sleep Maybe I'll finally stop dreaming Things that I know will never be so hard to be strong, dear. Yes, I know this is wrong, dear, but it's so hard to be strong, dear. I said I know this is wrong, dear, but it's so hard to be strong, dear. And I wrote this song cause I can't sing. It's not going away. Fall deeper each day. Just sit on your hands. Just sit on your hands. Just sit on your hands. Just sit on your Just sit on your hands if that's what it takes not to touch me. All right. And she wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Wow. wow. That was oh, awesome, man. man. No, it's, it's nice. Just, it's metal. Mm. I um, think, so this is one of the songs you prepared for your, your upcoming concert. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, my, uh, my serenades. You know, I do those Wednesday and Thursday night, and then I do the farmer's market every Saturday. And that's just, right. you know, it's not really a serenade song, but man, you know, it really like gets to love. It's by Kim Ware. It's one of her songs. Yeah. And I just like, man, I get it. You know, like I totally get this song. I've had these conversations. You know what I mean? Well, and that's <laughs> what I was going to ask you was I saw that you had just performed with Kim Ware not long ago. Um, yeah. And yeah. was that the first time that you two had ever performed together? Uh, we've performed together twice now. Okay. I think, yeah, we have. Luckily, you know, we did the farmer's market one and we did the serenade once. And she's coming back in October. And that just thrills me to death. I've got to learn, you know, many of the songs that I have time to learn from, from everybody. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I try to, yeah. you know, I try to, I try to just learn what's around me. And you really get this whole other idea of a song when you play a friend's song. I don't know what that's about, but there's some kind of magical spicy thing that's going on when you know the person pretty good you know what i mean yeah. i got a pretty good feel yeah. for who kim is i mean i've only talked to her maybe you know played with her like twice and barely know her but boy you just get this sense of not like who they are or, or what they like or how they treat people or anything but more like what their soul is about man you get this idea about yeah. their soul yeah. that i just cannot you explain. connect to it. Yeah. connect man yeah you know some musicians especially the ones that have passed Man, I tell you, I feel that connection so deeply from, and it, and it goes on. It goes on my whole life. 
I like connect to people in this real weird way, you know, with music. And I just, or not weird, but I think just emotional way. I just love it, man. Music's a beautiful thing. It is. It is. Uh, CJ, when did you and Kim first cross paths? On Kimono. Well, on, 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 on Facebook, I suppose. Now, I remember hearing her sing, but I don't fucking remember where. You know what I mean? I mean like, you know, it, it could have been even later, you know, in the 2000s for all I know. But I know that I heard her before I knew, met her on Facebook live somewhere but i could not place it i don't think you know what i mean but um i know her voice right away like i that die for that voice i love the uh the southern twist and twang yes. man. dig that shit so much you know uh, being a southern man i guess you know what i mean mm -hmm. I just love it man. if a she peach really could a if a peach could talk it would sound like kim ware sing you <laughs> if that makes peach sense. Sing, son. Oh. I'm gonna learn Palisade speeches too. You know, Palisade speeches Ooh, that's like amazing. amazing. That's an amazing song, man. You know, it really takes me to to talking to my father in a way I would have never talked to my father. You know what I mean? Or you know, yeah. uh, think positive about him. It's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to pick up someone else's positive vibe towards someone that you had, you know, issues with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, did that lead to any uh, songs uh, maybe that we haven't heard? Uh, I mean, you have a lot of songs about happiness, and and oh, yeah. that's that's your thing, and I get oh, yeah. that, and I like that. I can make them cry too, baby. I made yeah, cry. I, do you have songs uh, from some of your moments in your life that weren't so happy? I do, man. I do. You know, um, you know, I play them all the time, and you know, it's hard because, like, Mama, especially, you know, after Mom died, to play that song and knowing how I wrote it. You know, man, it's like, uh, yeah, that one there, you know, but I, I, I heal right over it, though. You know, I don't really I don't I don't usually dive deep in the emotions, but I can and I can take a crowd with me. And, that, and and I did it the last time I did it. You know, I had some people run out crying and I had um, it was a very emotional time. And some people got a lot of healing from it. And uh, so it's kind of like when you ask me a question like that. It's not that I, I don't play a sad song. It's that I don't take it to the to that level all the time, man. Right. Because, you know. Well, and again, that would be show downer. <laughs> right. Man, so, well, it's, it's, you know, usually that stuff is for you and, you know, close, you know, people to you. Well, I needed to vent that happen. night and I thought it was all right for that, you know. But there is, a, it's funny, you're live, you know, you have power over people. And, you know, there are ways to manipulate what they do and how they react to you. And, you know, and, and it's um, it's kind of like a, wrong with sandwiching a song like that in, in, in betwixt, you know, happier, happier songs. Well, I can sing a sad song happy. That's my point. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't I don't have a problem putting sad and happy together as much. I have I just don't know how far to take them sometimes. Yeah. You, you know, you know what I mean? But, you know, I can make a sad song sound happy, man. You know, I mean, Mama's a glorious song. It's about glory, the, the, the glory that I get to sing. And when I sing, I sound like her. And, and like, I, don't, I miss singing with her bad. That's what the song's about. Mm -hmm. But, man, I hear her when I sing. And uh -huh. that is beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, CJ, what is the uh, what's the most difficult song you've ever had to write? Like about a particular like topic or happening? What was the most difficult one you've ever written? The one I the one of ones that I fought with maybe the most. I don't know, man. You know, um, I stopped. I stopped looking for difficulty. You know what I mean? But I, I guess I guess I could turn that around to something like, you know, are you? Like Carolina song is probably like the one that yeah it's it's got a lot of simple parts, but it's the first one that I complexly put together at different rhythms, different yeah. timings, different speeds. You know what I mean? Different everything. I wanted it to shift gears, and I wanted to show. I wanted, to, I guess, to exercise the power that I had over those switches because I, I couldn't command good switches before right 
So I said, well, Carolina song, I want to make it like six songs all in one. You know what I mean? And like give Carolinian six reasons to love everything about us. You know what I'm saying? So like do it in six different ways, you know, you know, and I, and I accomplished it. I mean, it goes from super fast to halftime to, um, you know, a little faster than that in this weird four. And then it goes to back to the, to the regular four. And then it goes back to the crazy backwards four you know, at a different speed, you know, and uh, that one wasn't difficult as in, oh, this is hard. That one was difficult in that it took a long time for me to free my ass up a little bit to do something like that more like, you know what I mean? Understood. Yeah, you know. Would but you like I, to play another one for us now? I don't fight songs. Say again? Yeah, Would what do you like want to play another one for us now? Preferably a happy song. <laughs> All right, well, then we'll do some Carolina song. And what I'll do is I'll just rip it up and I'll just change it all around again, just for y'all, okay? All right. I'll play it away. It's never been played, just for you. <laughs> put together was it good or rugged has a good time yes indeed and the carolina boys got a funny funny feeling that the song's just a dancing casting and a reeling having a good time with each stuff to 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 tease Songs come at us and sometimes they're strange Oh, the music, it comes at us pretty fast I just don't get in rhymes way Cause she's got their eyes Seats. I said, now start it to move Because the minds will be flying in You best be moving in the old, in the old wow. Always a game where we're chasing one another Not until one of them catches the other Falling in love into the key of C I swear you can see the steam And you can tell that the song is theirs one, two, three, four. She's got their eyes. And ooh, 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 mamas. She's got their eyes. The prettiest little songs you ever heard from these guys. Thank you. A little crazy, right? I'm sorry. It's wow. so crazy. That was awesome. No, no, man. That was awesome. Shit, man. You... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rory. <laughs> Go ahead, Rory. <laughs> you just released a CD, am I correct? Yeah, my, my CD's name is Zalia. Right. 
right. Actually, right. some of the people in the come on to my house actually help you design that. And come yeah, they came up with the idea of the whole the, the flowers. Yeah. I'm going to run all my records in sequential order of flower names. You see, I should have another one out by the end of the year, and then I'll start another one. I'm going to do at least at least one a year. You know what I mean? I mean, I got like 40 to 100 songs or something. And, and you have a studio that you go to to record those? Yeah, I have a studio here, but I'm just, you know, I need a good sound engineer. And that's why I think Doug Williams and I have worked so well together. Doug Williams, uh, electromagnetic radiation recorders, I think is just a, um, he's just a genius. I mean, I, I mean, a sound auditory genius, because man, I tell you. You work well together. Man, I, it's more that when I hear something from him, it ain't no it ain't no bullshit at all, man. I mean, it's what was played, you know, like it it, straight I'm, up. I'm a little bit of a purist and sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to get to where a dude and a guitar can sound good together, you know, and the rest is there and all, but you got to sound good, period. No effects, no this, no that, no rock and roll, no nothing. What does that sound like? Can you pick up a guitar, dude, and play it and do that? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. where's your level at? You know, and that's kind of what this is all about with me is where am I with just a dude and a guitar? You know, and I so I added the band on some of them, too. You know, and in the next album, I have more band stuff, but it'll still have a lot of that solo stuff, which is just me and a guitar. Showing you some love and my talent. You know what I mean? There you go. Trying Jonathan, to... you had a question? How did you, uh, on that particular song, how did you get the idea to have it, to have one section be like fast, one be slow, one be like mid-tempo, et cetera, et cetera? Um, probably Green Eyes by Big Break. You know, man, I was like, I kind of emulated that a little bit. I always loved that song. I always loved like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a musical, um, uh, I'm spoiled. I, I call it spoiled because I really like the good stuff, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the kind of shit that I'm attracted to, you know? And yeah. there are bands who do that stuff, but they're never a hit, of course. You know, they're always like the long the long one, you know, like a Nazareth. You know what I mean? The Nazareth yeah. album is fucking phenomenal. Please Don't Judas Me is this amazingly complex work of art man musical art that is just phenomenal to me it's, it's just genius this 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 movement and these songs and tripping daisy you know they had this song about a girl or whatever but man them motherfuckers had a had a song trip away and, and they had they had a couple of songs in that album like prick and man i'm telling you what that shit was deep man you know we ain't we ain't yeah. talking here playing about little stuff you know and they change times and they do stuff like that and they go deep man and that's that's kind of what that song's about yeah you know but yeah i did i picked up from you know the people before me man and zeppelin does a lot of that shit they do a lot of time changes and change when beatles do a lot of that shit man you know i, I always kind of like i hear a lot of covers and i respect covers man but i tell you man some of the shit that they do and people don't do it, it just ain't right man i mean you know they're jumping octaves. You know what I mean? Like with Kim, how good she sings that song, man. You know, I don't I can't do everything she does, and I do everything differently, you know what I mean? But man, yeah. I learn about her jumping up there and grabbing that and building that tension in there on the last set part of that song, man, and really giving it all you got on that last one, you know? Right. It's like uh, every song you sing, it's got, it's got to feel like it's the last song that you're ever going to sing as long as you live, man. You, know, you really got to be in it, man. That's what I'm really trying to do, you know? Yeah. That's what that song does for me. It puts me there. No matter what my mood is, you know, I'll be jumpy or I'll be mellow or whatever. It puts me back to even. You know what I mean? Yeah. It gets it out. It puts me back on time. It's like the real good first song in the show for me. Where can our viewers find you in the near future? Where are you going to be playing? Well, I played the Sweet Meadow Serenade every Wednesday and Thursday in Salisbury, and I broadcast that live on CJ Guitar Art, my little page, my little CJ Guitar Art page. Uh -huh. and, then, um, uh, I, and then on every Saturday morning, I host a singer-songwriter song swap usually also, which is what the Sweet Meadow stuff is. 
and at the farmer's market in Salisbury, North Carolina. I've been playing that since 2009. Wow. Do you do you do a lot of merchandise when you do shows like that? Do you sell uh, your CDs? Yeah, I don't do any merchandise stuff, man. I just play music. Um, you That's know, I'm I'm getting there. You know, like I have the guitars for sale, technically. But yeah, no, no, I don't do. I don't really do that. I just I just get tips and and have a guest. You know what I mean? But yeah, I should. I'm, I'm looking into it all the time. You know how that is. Yeah. You know. Yeah, never know. You know, yeah, I, they might like to buy your CD or a T-shirt or something, you know. Oh, you know. they will. They will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy, you know, it's practically easy money, but that's not why I want to do stuff, you know. Like, I, you bring that up, right? <laughs> yeah. This is what happens in CJ's brain, okay? All right, yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about merchandising, okay? In CJ's brain, it's like, okay, so this is what we do. We go to Homegrown Love and we get 10 shirts, right? And we get them done, you know, custom like this, right? You know what I mean? She does a custom job because it's local. You understand? And then you take it down here to Main Street, and then he puts that silver stuff, and you do that design that you've been wanting to do with your hair all down <laughs> the dirt and do it all in silver. You know what I mean? And then put CJ Guitar Art on the back. You know what I'm saying? In red, and do it all artistic. You know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, then you need to have 50 bucks a piece for him. Damn. Ooh. And then you know, and I'm like, well, you know, because <laughs> that's how much it costs. For what it's worth, I just uh, have make sure tie dye shirts. Let's see how my brain works. You know, and then I don't do anything because I'm like, just I only want to do shirts art. at your house and then sign them. Then they're they're all originals. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you see how I do it. You see how I like I go up these levels until I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got to bring my next guest up. He's an old friend of mine. Please stay uh, if you like and and comment on the last half of the show. We'd love to have you. CJ, uh, thank you for standing in for Jay Thompson. Much yes. appreciated. Yes. Yeah, this dude's funny. Watch out. This dude's really funny. Dennis yes. Piper and I uh, go way back. We used to do comedy together before I moved to China. Um, I, I, I'm seeing in his promo now that he's doing ukulele. So I know some of our fans, some of our people from Kimono My House will dig that. Yep. Um, and hopefully he'll play some for us, I hope. So let's bring Dennis Piper on up. Um, hey, buddy. Hi, Rory. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, a pleasure. Uh, this is actually, he is actually one of the few people that I've had on this It's Casual that was on the original It's Casual. Oh, wow. Um, and let me tell you the story about this. Unfortunately, oh, I was on the road doing comedy. And uh, Steve Eric was hosting my show for me, another comedian who I hope to get on the show soon. And Steve asked Dennis, I'm guessing, to come on. And Dennis came on with a, I agree. a suitcase full of soap and shampoos from a hotel, from different hotels. <laughs> well, the full the full and story it was is awesome. and the I was full so story is I didn't want to come show. on. I didn't want to come on as myself. And so Steve and I made up the character Bob Lemke, Bob, owner of the world's largest Lemke. hotel and motel soap collection. And that was the gag. And I improv the whole thing. And Steve played it. Steve and, and I played, We got scary. phone calls. People believed it. Oh my God. It was so and, funny. I, I was like so upset that I wasn't there for that show because that was that was comedy gold. And uh, yeah. it was it was a really wonderfully improvised thing. And at one point I think he said, uh, Something to the effect of, uh, it's a good thing you don't sing. <laughs> and you, you came up with, well, yeah, I can sing. Oh, <laughs> I always got, always say yes. Bob Lemke was hysterical. He Bob was Lemke. Oh, great. And I took the last name after Mark Lemke, the baseball player who was on TV all the time with the brains. <laughs> the so, which is, yeah. Uh, so he had, he had a bunch of little soaps from different hotels and shampoo bottles. And I want to say this, yeah, that Steve and I had just cobbled together, uh, and I none of my good ones were there. They were in the, they were in the uh, safe deposit box for insurance purposes. That was the story. Uh, that was part of the bullshit story. And I want to mention before I go any further, you were talking about shoes in China that you can't get shoes. Oh, yeah. I get my shoes from China. This is one of the pair I recently got. Uh, <laughs> oh God! You know. Oh man. Oh, and then these, these are my favorite new pair. Uh, the Gaudis, these just, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Zombie shoes. <laughs> yeah. And they're just canvas. I love them. And for some reason, they have to say the name, they say the word Toledo on the bottom. 
You know, I have no idea. <laughs> they do yeah. that. They do yeah, that. Yeah, crazy, crazy. So, yeah. so a little <laughs> plug American. for the, UI, the UIN shoe company somewhere in Zhangdong. Um, oh, funny. <laughs> Two for sixty-five dollars. But actually, yeah, I'm I'm a forty-seven size shoe in China. Yeah, I think these I would are tell 44. people that I was forty-seven. They would all give me like a. They would all just vape a lot. Are you crazy? <laughs> really? Your shoe That's is forty-seven? No way! You, you're confused. You, you did the math wrong. I could get shoes in Hong Kong occasionally, but not often. You lie! You lie! You all time lying. You've done the oh, math wrong. Well, and, and again, the sizing over there is, I, I when I left for China in 2004, I was an extra large. I'm a 2XL now, but I was an extra large when I left. So when I got there, I found out that in Hong Kong, I was a 2XL. And in China, I was a 3XL. So they go oh. up size, yeah, in Hong Kong, and then they go up two sizes for China. Ah. Yeah. If I don't get it, if I get an extra large in China, I won't even be able to get it around me. So boy, you know, hanging out, living the good life, uh, the dream, um, <laughs> doing comedy still, um, got yeah. into music a few years ago. Um, I'm terrible, but I still fun doing it. Um, oh. Well, that usually works uh, with comedy, you know. If you if you're not good at it, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm still, you know, I'm still, I'm still doing time, um, having fun. I'm not traveling too much anymore. I just got to sick of that. But I go to yeah. Cincinnati, date and regular, and hang out with younger guys, and it feels good. And a lot of great women comics too. I didn't mean to say guys only, but that, that's just an expression. Um, and, you know, I got a thing next week. I'm doing a show at the American Sign Museum. I got something coming, uh, a couple of gigs in September. Um, Cool. You know, Ed, but the big thing is, I'm on TV on this casual, man, again. The first, the, you know, he's so, back. And I get to be on as my real self. So this is exciting. I and fix yeah, my hair. Dennis Piper this time. Yeah. So that's I'm really excited. So um, even though I have the Bob Lebke tape somewhere here in the house. So now you're one of the few comics who I would actually ask tell me, tell me about a real good hell gig or two that you had back in the day. <laughs> oh god well one of the worst ones ever wasn't i was on a, a, a really a good run of gigs but um i was working with a magician and um there was a gig on a tuesday night in purdue in west lafayette indiana and the oh. back wall of the gig was nothing but a mirror it was a dance club and this poor <laughs> magician is trying to do tricks in front of a mirror <laughs> oh my God! It was just Everything. thirty minutes of just hell, you know. And I had to follow this. It was just oh, so. <laughs> and now the comedy oh, stylings of Mr. Dennis Piper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there was some. I did this one in Iowa. Oh my God! Like it was, you know, you know. Honest, I got a barn. And um, <laughs> like 33 people sitting around all over the place. And uh, oh, oh, I'm getting paid for this. And I'm thinking, oh, there's just no amount of money. Um, <laughs> you know, so. I can't remember What's who it was that had the, remember, the, did you ever work at the bowling alley? They, they actually had a No, I, I never did a bowling alley. At a bowling alley. No. <laughs> so um, you'd be in the middle of a bit and you'd hear... <laughs> <laughs> Reset on nine. Reset on nine. Okay. There, there goes my timing. Oh boy. I, Dennis oh god. The... Oh yeah. Oh, just a couple years ago, I went over to Chillicothe, Ohio, um, and I do a gig. It's right in the middle of the NBA playoffs, and oh, Cleveland no. is in the playoffs, oh, and they've got and LeBron is still in Cleveland at the time. <laughs> And um, so they got the damn game on, okay? And you're standing there, and half the people have their back to you because they're looking at the bar, and you're standing there, and then you're standing there, you're looking at the game, right? And yeah. even the people you're watching, you keep going you know, every – so finally I'm doing, like, two jokes and blah, 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 punchline. Lakers, 47, you know. Blah, 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 you know. <laughs> that yeah. reminds me of uh, 
So that reminds, uh, have you, I don't know if you've ever heard of Stuart Huff, but he has oh, a similar I know. Story. Yeah, Stuart's regular in this area, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. He does a lot in Ohio. He was doing a show at Crackers in Indianapolis. This is probably right. six, that's seven, eight club. years ago. And uh, the Pacers were in the playoffs. And like what you were describing, everybody was on their phone or watching whatever. Right. So Stuart <laughs> – this is why I love Stuart Huff. He, because there was like a TV screen in the sound booth, and, and, but it wasn't showing the game. But Stuart convinced that audience and crackers that the game was on the screen. And he's just like, he just, I don't remember who all was on the pace at that time. It was like, oh, Rudy Gobert just hit a three. The crowd would just go nuts and all that stuff. He made all of it up. He made all of it up. And he was oh, hyping it. Great. And the best part of it is he was hyping it up like, oh, it's the final seconds. Pacers can win on a shot. Oh, they made the shot. They're going to the next round. Well, <laughs> turns out they actually lost by like 25. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's oh, great. Man. So I gotta ask the obvious question. When did you start doing comedy? Gosh, um, the first time ever was when Barbara and I, before we were married, went to Vail and ski, ski bummed. This mm -hmm. is when Gerald Ford had lived out in Vail, just after his presidency. So 77, 78. Yeah. And I worked at a bar and between the band's breaks, um, the owner used to pay me 50 bucks to go out and tell jokes. And I used to go out and tell joke jokes. And um, that was the first time I ever did stand up. Um, and then when uh, we moved to Florida, um, that's, I went to that's Coke Bob Shoemaker feature pay, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you were scoring big time back then. Um, yeah, this, and uh, I went to when we moved to St. Pete. Uh, I went to uh, one time up to a thing in Clearwater, and I just bombed horribly, and didn't go again for like a year and a half. And then started going in St. Pete for a while. Started getting better and better. Had a lot of guys help me out. Uh, Vinny Montello, Bennington, uh, Tommy Blaze. Uh, Mike Nielsen, all those cats that were doing it back then. Steve, Eric, and I started together, you know. Um, Blaze, Blaze was from Florida? Tommy Blaze, yeah, Tommy Blaze. You, yeah, it was regular Tampa act, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yep. Um, very helpful to me when I first started. I know the Regan boys were. and uh, Oh, Dennis and Brian both, yep. Yeah. Yep, used to see and them regular. Sinbad, um, Sinbad's from Florida. I never met him, but uh, yeah, uh, but back in those days, you know, that's, those guys all were very helpful. And, you know, we worked a lot of Bob stuff and went from there. I really got, when we moved, the best thing that happened was when my wife wanted to move back north because I was on the road all the time and she had no family down there. She wanted to come back up around family. Mm -hmm. And once I moved back up here, I was near so many more cities. And right, had so much more to get to, you know, from St. Pete, other than doing Florida gigs, you're eight hours to Atlanta just to go anywhere, you know, and it's forever to, you know, you, to get gigs, you know, I know. otherwise you're stuck doing that Southeast all the time. Right. And uh, once I came up here, man, you know, within six hours of Cincinnati, there are so many big cities, so many more gigs and it just, you know, exploded. I mean, up here and I just, you know, boom, it, I worked the rest of you know, been doing it so many years. Um, took a few years off and we had the surprise baby. You know, I have 41 years married to the same woman. and uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, we have a 37-year-old daughter named Valerie and a 19-year-old daughter named Surprise! And she it really was, too. Um, but I actually took time off oh, when boy. she was young. And uh, well, that's kind of when... Um, I kind of cut back on the schedule and Barbara originally bought me a guitar. I started on the guitar, but the arthritis got so bad. I just wow. couldn't, I couldn't bend my middle finger anymore. I'm left hand. I play handed, and I just couldn't get these two fingers to go down far enough anymore. Oh, man, that sucks. And so I started playing a ukulele. Started fooling around, started fooling around <laughs> the ukulele and, um, you know, I'm getting by with it some. So, oh, there are days I can still play. I still have a guitar back there. There are days I can still play it, but most days um, I'm just playing like you know, like put on a, a a blues blues A minor backing track, and I'll just play little lead riffs and you know keep the box and pentatonic boxes. That's my man. Just, All right. Just, 
just to play some notes, you know, just at least these two fingers work. I can do that. You know, if I can't yeah. do chords and make a lot of chords anymore, you know, just at least play the guitar. But I play the ukulele a lot. Yeah, do you play um, original songs in, when you do comedy? or? or yeah, I got uh, – actually, I, went, I go to a music camp called Swan and Oa, which of all things, CJ, it's in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, I know all about it. I've been there, but I know all about it, man. Yeah, um, you probably know a lot of the same people I know from North Carolina that have been there. Um, yeah, we probably talk for 10 minutes, finally come have 20 people in common. But yeah, a few years ago, they said, they said to uh, – write a song about your job and so i ended up writing this um and I, I want to point out the ukulele it's a, a custom-made cigar box left-handed uh it's by a guy named chip ramsey in northern kentucky and it's got electronics in it too so you can <laughs> look it up. yeah i get really high sometimes i got a marijuana card by the way so it's legal uh, oh man oh and i want to mention because i didn't make any money in 2020 i'm sponsored by pax Pax Vibe, Pax. <laughs> yeah, Pax. And also sponsored by Astroglide, whether you're alone or with a partner. Astroglide for the ride of a lifetime. Treat yourself oh, nice. Boy. Astroglide, squirt it on twice. Um, <laughs> got those plugs in. I got to make a buck, man. Come on. So, anyway, so this is a That's song about expense. my job. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, I'm half Irish, I'm half German, a fact, I won't be labor, but that explains why I love to get drunk and steal artwork from my French neighbor. These are the jokes I tell to the folks, they're drinking beer, booze, and cokes. I'm up here telling jokes. I was in the grocery store just the other morning. God said I look familiar. I said you must watch porn. These are the jokes I tell to the folks. Sometimes I take some tokes Before I tell the jokes My sister and I We're identical twins I'll just let that joke sink in Cause these are the jokes I tell to the folks They're drinking beer, booze, and cokes I'm up here telling jokes I listen to folk music It puts my mind at ease When junkies break into my car They never steal my CD <laughs> Who the hell is Cliff Everhart? These are the jokes I tell to the folks. They're drinking beer, booze, and cokes. I'm up here telling jokes. I'll do this till I croaks. Stand up and tell jokes. And uh, that's a song I've been doing on the show. So. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. The crowd's loving Dennis, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dennis yeah. I've been doing that. Um, um, yeah. That I've been doing that, and the, the other gig I do with this is, I will get it out of the case. You know, I I, I said, oh God, I got it. Oh, the ukulele, and I'll make a big. Oh, I'm, I almost forgot, and I'll get it out, and I'll show, and I'll talk about the artwork of it, and I'll go, oh my God, and um, and it, not only is that, it, it it looked beautiful. It sounds great. And even though it was expensive, I mean, it's worth every penny. And my accountant says if, if I use it in my show, I can write it off on my taxes. And then I look at my watch and I go, well, I think that's about long enough. And then I take it back <laughs> off and I put it right back in the case and never play it, you know, so, which is a fun thing. Um, uh, 
Dennis, yeah, who was cool. your like inspiration that. to? Who was your inspiration to get into music comedy? comedy? Well, not music comedy. I mean, music comedy. I mean, there's just tons of um, a lot of comic comics that I've seen work with. You know, mm -hmm. that did use a, um, music in their act. I mean, I mean, I, my favorite, I guess. Gosh, going back to Steve Martin back when he played the, the banjo. You know, um, yeah. You know, um, I liked that. Uh, actually, I guess Tim Wilson. You know. To oh, me, God, yes. was the ultimate, John, I guess. You know, I'm a huge fan of Tim Wilson. You know, um, I got to work with Tim. Um, I got to lucky enough to work with him probably three or four times on the caravan. I was a feature and he was a headliner. And, uh, you know, because he lived in Louisville and I wasn't that far away here. And uh, Sobel, he, Dallas, uh, Tom Sobel, uh, you know, he <laughs> talked like that. Rory knows Tom. Tom is yep. Rory. He says, ah, uh, Tom Sobel, ah. Uh, Got a thing. Oh, he talked like that. And yeah, I got to work with like Tim. Yeah, I, actually, I had a great story. The late Tim Wilson. Uh, uh, who's the cat that wrote the stroke? Sings the stroke. Stroke me, stroke Billy me. Billy Squire. Billy Squire. Thank you very much, man. I was on Bob and Tom one day with Billy Squire and uh, Tim, and uh, wow. and him and Billy Squire talking, playing guitar together. This is when Billy Squire had come out play and as a solo. I'd done the whole Stroke album as a solo album. He was on here playing the Stroke as a blues song by himself. And during the breaks, him and Wilson were like playing real music together. It was like, woo, very cool to see. So yeah, um, but yeah, you know. So I guess he was my biggest guitar. I mean, but I could never write songs like he does. You know, I don't write big long songs like that. Even though I'm trying to. This, I close with a bit. I used to close with a bit. Now I'm using the song about selling my house to a black gay Jewish couple just to tick off the bigot next door who told me not to sell to a black gay Jewish couple. And um, and I'm working on trying to write that into a song. Uh, Nora Jane Struthers, at, at, again, at Swannanoa, has got me kind of on this path to write that into a song. And so it's been a slow slog. and uh, But I'm working on that. So that's still in progress. But. So, oh, I thought you said it was a closing bid. <laughs> I wish it was. No, the, cl the closing bid's about my uh, about selling my house to a black gay Jewish couple, which is about a two minute bit, verbally. But I'm trying oh, to work it. In. I'm trying. I'm trying to write it into a uh, a Can song, a song now. So um, you guys are lucky. I don't know where you guys are living. Um, I'm here in Ohio. We just had the cicadas again this summer, which yeah. were horrible. I mean, God, yeah, yeah, that noise all the time, and, and uh, it was weird. It was great because uh, I got to recycle the jokes about them I wrote 17 years ago, which was really <laughs> nice for me. Um, being very, <laughs> bring it back. Bring yeah, it back. they're a lot like Catholic kids. They're a lot. I mean, think about it. 17 years all protected, then emerge and have sex with anything with moves. That's like Catholic uh -huh. kids when they graduate high school. I mean, exactly, <laughs> you know, so um, I don't know. Oh, I wanted to show you this. This is something pretty cool. I uh, I invented this. This is a – I'm trying to get a patent on it right now, so don't you guys steal it. This is uh, my patent pending. This is my vape mask. This is the mask you wear when you want to take your safety, but you still want to get high. Or Look at me. I have trouble getting it in the hall. That's it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was an yeah, unintended joke. Did you notice there. he looks cooler? Did you notice he looks cooler when he's doing that? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, isn't it great? Man. I'm telling you, there's a great way to do this because the vape kind of stays right in here with you. You kind of get a double bounce back. It's almost like uh, um, shotgunning yourself, you know? It's like, ooh. Oh, did I mention I'm sponsored by PAX? I'm sponsored by PAX. By the way, uh, really nice got people. The keep the free, keep the free oil coming, fellas. Great job. I got to tell you that Dennis used to open for Cheech and Chong. And oh uh, boy, <laughs> no, I used to get them weed though. Uh, but I had to open. So. They smoked a lot of weed. He said. Oh, oh yeah, boy. man. Oh man, kept me in liquor for years. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Higher than the day uh, at 68. I, uh, so anyway, the, the COVID thing, I was, social distancing wasn't a problem. I figured out very early on every time I went to the grocery to just yell, 
hey, where's the medicine for crabs? And I, people would just stay away from me. Um, I never had an issue. Um, and oh, my wife just retired, which is kind of neat that she's home all the time. Uh, but she told, told me when she retires, our income's going down by a third. <coughs> and I told her, well, I wasn't worried because that third comes out of her half. You know, so <laughs> my half's still good, you know, so. Thanks. And I want to thank you guys that are still working for the FICA deduction on your paycheck every week. I appreciate that going right to my account. That, you know, appreciate that. <laughs> you know what I'm spending it on? It's been a few years. Tax pods. Um, so thanks, Ooh. fellas. I feel I brought that back around. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, merchandising. God, I'm not going to miss an opportunity. Oh, I want to mention my partner. For a long time, I was doing online comedy. I was doing a vent act, and I would actually put the mask on and do ventriloquism. Fuzzy. <laughs> and you'd never see my lips. Fuzzy. Fuzzy. you know. Thank you. It worked for a while. I would like to also say, I don't, and you can drink water. I'm a big fan of Everton. Everton soccer. Love the toffees. Um, oh yeah, the T-shirts, man. Let me show you these. These are real nice. 2020. I was going to go to. Uh, Canada and England, and also work in the States. So I printed up these tour, virtual tour T-shirts. Ended up, uh, I have a great day job, is what it says there on the bottom. <laughs> virtual tour 2020. Of course, I ended up not going anywhere. <laughs> that was a wrong year for that, dude. Yeah, I got a shitload of those. That was a bad marketing decision. I've been selling those real cheap. Um, oh, anyway. No, they're collector's items, man. And I still have some of the old capsule. I have some of the night 2019 smile if you like sex t shirts. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was real popular. Um, so, yeah. Do you have any hotel soap? Any what hotel bills? Or? Soap. Hotel soap. Hotel soap. Oh, hell no, man. I've been doing gigs where I come back, but I tell you what, I do have a shitload of free Waffle House napkins. Boy, I've been stealing those like left and right. On my table right here are Arby's napkins. Look at that. There them. you go. I got, I, got enough to, I got enough to make a book. Or also, um, as, hey, as, as you like to call it, really uh, okay. my daughter and I love brisket down. sandwiches, man. You know. I call that Asian your Asian Asian airport toilet paper is what that is, man. Uh, I've rolled joints in I've rolled joints in worse, you know. So um hold that around. You never can tell. Oh boy. I don't have anything else to oh this is well, that's I got, I say, you know when there's a pandemic, the paper is the first thing to go, you know, it's off the shelves. It was, man, it was. Um you know, I thank God we have guest house. You know, um, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, we weren't going to have guests. I mean, really, you know. And my wife is still <laughs> pissed about this. Uh. Like I'm the bad guy. <laughs> so where can we catch you in the near future? There, uh, where can you catch me in the near future? Uh, I'm in the. Uh, the last stall on the left at the Cincinnati Men's bus station on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. <laughs> um, you know, um, actually, no, uh, next Thursday, I'm in Cincinnati at the American Sign Museum. Uh, signs and Sticks benefit. Um, the 17th, I'm at the Glass Bar in, uh, the Glass Bar is in Mount Adams in Cincinnati. The 11th, I'm with Charlie Weiner somewhere in Cleveland up on Chagrin River, one of the yacht clubs up there. On the 10th, I'll be cutting loose in Cleveland with some music friends, um, going to some dinner party. And um, so, you know, um, I'll be, I'm around the Cincinnati area, man. I'm on Facebook, you know. Um, I'm not working a lot. I'm just kind of taking it easy, staying low and uh, hanging loose. Just stay out of Cleveland, man. Stay out of Cleveland. Oh, I, love, I love Cleveland, man. Cleveland's a great no. town. Dog, oh, you're crazy. No. I'm going to go see the Guardians, you know, whatever they are, you know. No. <laughs> Can't I remember Guardian. Oh, it sounds like a deodorant. You know, you know. <laughs> Columbus up to Cleveland, that long stretch of highway. I got pulled over. <sighs> right. And the police officer, you know, came up to my car and said, uh, do you have any 
paraphernalia or whatever in your car that I should know about. And I, he caught me speeding is what it was. And uh, I looked up at him and I used Fred Greenlee's line. I said, and no, there's no dead. Dr-. I said, no, there's no dead bodies in the trunk either. I swear. <laughs> he actually went down on his knee. He was laughing. And he let me go. He gave me a warning. Here you go. I said, I'm on uh, my way to a comedy show up in Cleveland. He, he said, well, slow down. I know you got to make them laugh. Slow down. Oh, my God. And it's like uh, one of the only times I ever got out of a ticket. Wow. Uh, I, I woke up once in the morning with uh, Frankie Bastille offering the policeman money. Oh, he was, and I remember him saying, well, I don't have a driver's license per se. <laughs> Bastille was was something, man. He and uh, I can't remember who it was that went with him. Um, I think it was Dave Clark. They went to Elvis's. They are the ones who went to Elvis's grave and put a uh, Whopper and uh, French, French fries, French fries. Grave <laughs> and were escorted off the property. <laughs> the legendary, he has some legendary stories, man. Frank's a great guy. Mm. He's sadly missed. Yeah. I remember when I was at, when I was an opener uh, at the comedy corner, and Frankie was there, and I brought him up, and I said he's open for uh, uh, George Thorogood and the Destroyers. <laughs> I said it's the same, it's the same band, numb nuts. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Oh, those careful oh, ladies. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on, both of you. We had such a great time tonight. We went a little bit over. Uh, Renee, are you there? Are you still there? Let's bring her I out. am still here. Yes. Yeah, this was a Producer great show, and guys. And this co-host. was a great show. Yes. This was really fun. This was great. CJ, you knocked it out of the park. And Dennis, I knew this we was going to be fun, but it was a lot of fun with CJ, as always. And uh, again, thank you guys for coming. One more sing Renee songs for the today. rest of the I'm, night. I'm exhausted. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd so you I say, CJ? I want to sing Renee songs for the rest of the night. Oh, hell yeah. Right thank you. Right? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right, ready? All right. Oh, right now. Come on. I can't believe what you're saying to me. Felt that by damn sight you could see. And I can't believe what you're saying to me. You're out of my league, you're out of my league, you're out of my, 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 so out of my league. Oh, yeah, baby, so out of my league. Oh, yeah, darling, so out of my league. He's even your other name, Josh. All right, that sounded awesome. Holy yeah. cow. Thank, Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Dennis. All right. right. Dennis, you killed it, brother. You're awesome. Thanks, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, real fun. Man, come to Swatanoa next summer. I will. I will. One of these, probably. We'll see. You know. Yeah, yeah, man. My if you need Astro Glide, please contact Dennis. PM him. <laughs> uh, they've oh, got, they've sent me plenty, man. <laughs> you guys have a great night, all right? We're Good night, everybody. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.